All right, so again, <clears throat> we're using um, the latest version of SunSwitch 2.8.2.5. And uh, you have to have all this already set up for what you're going to be utilizing for. I forgot to set my blend mode. I don't have my hardware connected. I'm going to be doing this maybe uh, over the weekend. And then I'm running and analyzing all my stuff through Engine DJ, which Sorato and Virtual will pick up anyways. But you can do these separately once you go into your uh, Serato or Virtual DJ and start building and, and adding your crates. Otherwise, um, SoundSwitch won't pick it up. You'll have to have everything established in, in the crates. And I'm, I'll go through this with you um, step by step. So, um, again, I am using a Denim Prime 4 standalone unit. And I have to select this, otherwise it's not going to function correctly. Even though this is here, but this is not the configuration that I have. This works like if, for instance, I add my other players, which, I mean, everything is going to work anyways. But if you have a mixer and you have four turntables or four um, media players or whatever it is that you're using, then this is the configuration that you need to use. If you want to have these uh, running where three and four is your main then that's what you're gonna do is you know pick the decks number three and four is your main so <clears throat> I think a lot of people don't know how to set their their um, positions when they're utilizing this because you have to set positions so you have to go to MIDI and normally when you do MIDI this is what you show you know shows up this is what's similar to like if you have a control one you have all these uh, options here. You actually have more options on the control one. So everything here you can move however you want to move it. The colors I think you can, um, I don't know if you can actually mess around with the colors, you know, as far as changing the brightness and everything else. These are already embedded. You can actually change all these however you want, but I like to leave them as default. The static looks, this is where you're going to go, and this is where you start building all of your, you know, movements for your movers and all that. And I'm going to show you in, in a bit. Okay, so, standalone is just, you know, utilizing this um, like an analog um, light controller. So, to get out of here, you just press media again. If you're already done your stuff, then you would go to perform. But for the sake of this, we're going to go to edit. Since I've already got my 6 terabyte, you know, um, hard drive, external hard drive connected. Mine's is the Prime 4. That's how I labeled my, my deal. If I don't click on this, all of my lights are not, are not going to come on. And I'm going to show you. Like my last light here is a striker. If we go to like the blank video, I think it's where it's at. I don't think my striker comes up. See, so yeah, this is a, like the default. There's really nothing there. Once I click on the Prime 4, then it's got all my lights that I have on here, all my light fixtures, my fog machine, everything. So, this is what I mean by you having to create crates. Like, this is like for Serato. If you do virtual DJ, uh, something similar comes up. If not, you know, you'll go through like um, a collections tab, which in the engine DJ, this is what you see. And this is how you build all your collections, all your folders and playlists and all that. So I have six terabytes worth of stuff, you know. I haven't ran everything here because I'm, I actually redid all of my stuff, which I'm going to start redoing all of this uh, pretty soon. Um, I think the last thing that I worked on was my one terabyte. Man, I wish we had an up and down deal here instead of scrolling. This is like the last thing that I worked on. 
and this will come up in a minute. So this is like my one terabyte drive, but not everything's been um, auto scripted or I've not created a light show in some of the the music. And you know, like here, I haven't, you know, but I can click on it. And I don't know, oh, okay, well, yeah, my bad. All right, so like say for instance here, I'm gonna go ahead and auto script this. This will come up. I'm gonna go ahead and auto script this. Do a hip hop deal. We'll just go ahead and do it. So I've already created a that light show. And this one actually has my my last uh, feature that I added was this. And the reason I'm having to do redo the whole deal, which has been a minute, um, was because I recently had got my striker light beam from Eliminator Lighting, which I'm going to end up getting three more of those, and I'll add it to the whole light show deal. Remember, every time that you do a, a light show, you save it, press yes. Now this comes out, and I have uh, my light show here. Okay. Alright, so let me, I'm going to go to a lot. I don't think any of these have actually been updated. I'm gonna, let me see. Okay, so yeah, I think all of these have already been updated, which is, I don't remember doing that. Every time you want to get out of here, just go back and press, you know, any of your crates. Let me see if all of my light shows actually have that. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm gonna mess with my light shows later. All right, so again, for doing the positions on your movers, you're gonna go to MIDI. This screen will pop up and go to static looks. As you can see, I mean, these are the movements that I have already for my movers and this is only for movers I mean it doesn't make a difference on the other lights because the other lights are going to be positioned however you position them and like say for instance here the stage center if I want to mess around with this you're going to right click once or twice however your laptop or PC is configured you go to edit this is going to come up right this screen this is a screen where you can change the default colors of all your lights. I just leave them black, you know, because that's where it's going to start. You can leave them white, however you want to start them. Your positions, you always want to make sure that whatever movers you have, they're going to be positioned the way that you want them to be positioned. And this one, the stage center, because it's coming to the center of the stage, if I didn't want them uh, doing any kind of uh, strobing, um, I would have uh, positioned them to strobe, right? So in here, for your movers, like say for instance, you know, you want to click on this. Once you click on this, you have this, you know, other menu pop up, which wasn't there before. You know, uh, say for instance, you know, if you do this, I mean, all these menus are going to be popping up for whatever you have going on as far as like your... Um, your movers are concerned, right? My striker beam. And I'm gonna have to go in here and, and edit all these movements for all, for all my uh, stuff. Because I haven't done striker beams. So, say so for instance here, I have the stage center. So I have to go down here for the stage center for my new one that I've added. Which I wish that we could do all the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the intensity all the way to 100. Strobe, I don't want it strobing. Since these lights do a lot of stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on whatever I wanted to do here. Maybe focus for the stage center. Um, 
on the speed yeah okay so here's the speed and I'm gonna end up having to actually play with this a little bit I'm just gonna go ahead and use the 255 channels color macros you know what I'm not gonna really mess around with this yet until I, I connect it so I can play around with it in real time but I am going to leave this here and I'm going to leave this the way it is. So, for instance, I have, um, let's see, what are the ones that I got up here? The mini quads, my mini moving heads. We'll do the first one because all of these have already been messed around with. I didn't do auto mode because auto mode is just like the whole deal doing what it normally does if you never played around with your light and it's going through all the functions that the lights whatever light fixture has pan tilt and running i don't do this because then it's just going to continually just be moving back and forth back and forth so to edit my positions on any light fixtures you have to have a cartesian graph you know which is you know quadrant one two three and four and when you are running your your light show you're gonna be looking at your lights and this is weird how they have this because I would have figured that you know we would have something like north south east and west and this isn't configured that way and you know you can tell by the way that the positions are there the way that I have my lights it was kinda off it was weird so each of these deals like this is the center one of my lights is here one of my lights is facing this way you know uh, depending on how you have them on a truss system or whether they're hanging or whether they're upright and so whenever you um, are getting these dots if I were to connect my, my lights and I have these dots and I start moving them the lights are going to be moving in whatever direction that you're moving the dots so this is how you position every every uh, every light that you have. For instance, if I go to the move the mini quads, that's my mini quad down there. That's one of them. I do the other one. Bam! There's another one next to it. If I do another one, there's another one there. And I keep moving them. You'll see where the movements are at. That's my other one. This is the new striker beam. Notice this striker beam is still in the center. This one, again, until I get the other three, I'm not really gonna mess with it for now. But I do have to go in here and I have to edit these positions because I'm gonna do a follow-up video on this on my striker beam and y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Once I connect it, this beam is not gonna do anything. It's just gonna be either focus upright or if I hang it on a truss, it'll be focused down. So it's not necessarily going to be focused on a position in regards to this, which would be the um, the stage center. I actually have to move this around to where I want the beam focused at. And here's all the other positions that everybody has. You know, on this one, even if I put here... Uh, stage center for instance I'm gonna go ahead and put that there everything moved right we can pick a uh, apply I'll go back and then I'm seeing everything it's still there all right so this one yeah it's still gonna be there And again, this is a position that I actually want stage center, which is kind of weird. I mean, I don't, this is weird how they have this here. I mean, if I hit apply, I mean, it's just, it should be there. But this one, I'm still going to have to move no matter what. It's a 19 channel light. It's way more channels than my other ones, which the mini quads are 12. The mini heads are, what are the mini heads? 
think my mini heads are maybe like nine nine channels, ten channel lights, something like that. But that's how you go in here and you edit your positions. All of these are going to be the same. For you to edit them, you gotta right click. This menu will come up. You have to make sure that all your positions are good. You go into edit positions and all of your positions should be like this one's a disco ball. The disco ball, you would figure that in a Cartesian plane, the way that you have everything out, this would be the ball. Or at least that's what you would think. And your DJ setup will either be here or wherever you would have it, you know. This is this is where you would you would think. But for some reason this the way that this is configured, it's not like that. And to me personally, all of these, even though I had them on a truss, they seem to be off. But I just went on something that was general. And I was like, okay, well, if the disco ball was in the center, then I'm looking at my lights. And I'm looking at it, you know, in the ceiling, for instance. And I'm putting everything in the center. So these positions where I have this one, that's positioned going up. Um, at a um, From a truss system... It would be going up, I would say, maybe somewhere between 30 and 60 degrees. And the same for the other one. It's just on the opposite end. My, all of my mini quads, they're kind of close together. So they're, two of them are from one side, two from the other. The striker beams, I'll have two on the outside and two uh, you know, to the right and two to the left. And these I have yet to position. And this is for the disco ball, so I would come here, I would put a disco ball, I would apply. That's not implying that this is actually what's going to happen. So I got to change, for instance, I, I got to get on this, I got to give it the position of the disco ball. Um, it's going to be intense because of the disco ball movement. I am going to have it strobing a little bit. So I gotta click on the strobe. Wait a minute, that's muting it. Click on the strobe and then give it the intensity of the strobe. You know, which I don't think I want it too intense because it's gonna it's actually a bright light. I'll be doing the gobos, the prisms. For right now I'm gonna have them all default to all the channels. I'm gonna go ahead and position that. Rotations of all the prisms. Prism to rotation. Let it focus. Frost, I'm not going to use too much. Color macro, yes. The effect auto, I'm not going to put. Again, the parent auto and parent uh, tilt speed, speed. I'm not going to do none of that. And I'll have to come back and edit that position once I connect my light. But yeah, that's how you do this. Once you're done, you don't want to see this anymore. It doesn't have to necessarily go back to default. It's going to go to default on its own. Go to MIDI and you'll be back out here. And once you're done, if you want to switch, you know, modes, once you're ready to start, you have everything connected, just go to perform and you should be good.